Hi, Paula. Hi, Brandon. Brendan. <laughs> Just getting our information pinned and I'll get started. Hey everybody. Everybody, it's super happy. The cold months are behind us. We are officially in spring, which means um, some of us will be suffering from allergies. And I know um, there's been a quite a bit of an interesting conversation about how to um, delineate between just you know regular old allergies. Or, you know, coronavirus. So I actually want to talk a little bit about that today. I am, um, again, getting my comment pinned at the bottom and then we'll get started. But hope everybody is having a happy Tuesday. It is Tuesday. Yes, Tuesday. And I'm almost there. I had to type it all out, which is obviously... Not the best practice. <laughs> and we're almost there. Um, so as you all know, um, during the past few months, Whitman Walker Community's Health Department has expanded its outreach efforts. Um, that includes, you know, these type of conversations on social media. Um, we cover various topics from uh, social determinants of health, access to care, uh, health practice, HIV, STI um, interventions. And so our series of outreach sessions also focus on the current pandemic and ways that you can manage your sexual, personal and mental health. Um, I'm still typing here, so give me one second and we'll jump in. All right, I think I got it. There we go. All right, so let's get started. So today, again, I want to talk a little bit about uh allergies and and what it kind of means during you know where we stand in the world right now um so again it can be a little bit of a challenge to kind of tell you know whether you're suffering from allergies or whether you might uh have symptoms of COVID-19 so I want to help educate and support you through that um, March 21st actually marked, marked the first official day of spring. And now that we're headed into April, it's definitely nicer out. The temperatures are getting better. The sun is out more. Um, even the cherry blossoms have started to bloom. So for a lot of us, we are going to start feeling the effects of allergies. Um, and you know, the spring is allergy season. I actually suffer from spring and fall allergies, but those spring allergies are typically worse for me. And seasonal allergies can really cause a number of symptoms that can make us feel unwell. Um, sometimes those symptoms just can be an annoyance, but other times in the middle of a pandemic, they can be really concerning and, and could um, could necessarily, you know, be similar to some symptoms of COVID-19. So that's why I want to help you understand what that looks like, what the differences might be, how they overlap, and... Um, and whether or not you should go into isolation or not. So 
Uh, let's start with allergies. So everyone has a different reaction to seasonal allergies. Again, I said my spring allergies are typically more worse than my uh, fall allergies. However, there are some telltale signs of what seasonal allergies look like. Um, a seasonal allergy could be, you know, irritation in your throat, which might trigger, you know, coughing. Um, you might get headaches just from, you know, sinus and sinus, um, your sinus has been clogged or impacted from those allergies. Um, you might even feel fatigue uh, and have a sore throat or experience some sneezing and itchy, watery, runny eyes, all of that stuff, as well as runny nose. So, um, you know, again, like, like I said, some of those, some you, you may experience some of those, you may not. Um, I know there's different variations and different combinations that you might experience from those allergies, but those are typically what a person who are suffering from allergies, um, you know, might include. Some people often report uh, shortness of breath as well, which we know that is a symptom of COVID-19. So if you have seasonal allergies and you are experiencing these symptoms and you know it happens every year, you know your body and you know how your body reacts to those allergens. So it's very important to just listen to your body. Um, you know, you've been if you've been suffering from allergies for a long time, again, you know how that that feels for you. Um, now let's talk about COVID-19, which are, there are some key indicators of, you know, if you might, that could indicate that you have symptoms of COVID-19. Some of those symptoms are fever and chills. You may not get that with the allergy. So if you're experiencing fever and chills, it's probably something other than allergies. Um, you could have a cough, uh, body aches, headaches, fatigue, loss of taste or smell. Uh, shortness of breath. Again, those things, that some of the telltale signs for COVID-19 is, you know, fever chills, that loss of taste of smell, like those things, um, you know, might be indicators that you are experiencing uh, COVID-19 symptoms. Uh, less commonly, people experience sore throat or runny nose, but that's not a uh, highly reported, um, that's not a highly reported symptom of COVID-19. But if you are concerned that you are experiencing symptoms and you know that you haven't had it but had it before so you don't really know what that looks like for you it's probably important to get a test and just figure out you know whether or not you need to quarantine um so the cdc actually provided a checklist that i wish let's see if i could post it here it might help i did yes all right so here's a bit of a checklist that actually shows the difference between uh, COVID-19 versus allergy symptoms. So as you see here on the screen, we have fever chills, uh, which is not one of those reported symptoms for allergies. Then you have a cough, which are for both. Uh, body aches, uh, not really a, or not have been a reported symptom of, you know, of allergies. Also, headaches, tiredness, those things can kind of come with both of those those things. So just keep that in mind if you are uncertain whether or not. Now, loss of taste or smell, that is a COVID-19 reported symptom. Now, that symptom is not reported by everybody. However, there have been some reports of that symptom in COVID-19, but that's not a symptom that is commonly reported with allergies. So if that's what you're experiencing, you probably should just get tested for COVID-19 and, and quarantine yourself. Um, shortness of breath. Um, it's kind of like, you know, shortness of breath is less common with allergies, but yes, a person who are suffering from allergies or experiencing allergies could have symptoms of shortness of breath. Uh, short, sore throat, less common with COVID-19, but uh, typically common with allergies just because of the allergens irritate your airways and obviously uh, impacts um, you know, just the way your throat feels. Um, <clears throat> sneezing, not a necessarily a report of COVID-19. However, you know, everybody's different. It could be something. But for allergies, um, that is definitely something that people report. Sneezing, itchy, watery eyes, all that stuff you hear on the Claritin commercials um, are reported. But if you're experiencing those symptoms and those symptoms only, it's less likely that it's COVID-19. All right, so let's talk about, you know, having this 
itchy and watery eyes because I think that's really the indicator of whether or not you're experiencing uh, COVID-19 versus, you know, allergies. Um, it could just be your seasonal allergies if this is itching and watery eyes. If you think you're suffering for see seasonal allergies, there are a few things that you could do at home to alleviate the symptoms. Some of those things could uh, be like using air conditioning instead of like open those opening windows and letting those allergens into your home. So you might want to replace uh, air conditioning with fresh air while you're in allergy sit season. Um, you could use nasal spray. Um, I actually prefer like a neti pot to help clear out my airways when I'm ha suffering from allergies. Um, but there's also the little nasal sprays that you can just pump inject into your um, nasal ways. Um, also, you might want to just talk to a doctor and they can help recommend some of the things that would be better for you and your symptoms. Um, also, just understand that there are some similarities and some differences between, you know, COVID-19. So just make sure that you are getting tested. Make sure you if you have if you need to get tested, um, there are resources um, at Whitman Walker's website, as well as DC.gov, where they can show you where the testing sites are in the DC area. Uh, same for Maryland, Virginia. You can check out the local sites for respective websites and you can get a listing of all testing sites that are available and finally when it is possible for you i think you should get vaccinated for COVID 19. Um, if you are vaccinated you have a much lower chance of getting COVID 19 so um and i actually got my vaccine I don't think it was too bad. You know, I just had a little bit of tiredness and that was pretty much it. So I did the Moderna vaccine, the two dose vaccine. So officially as of like last week, I'm, I'm considered fully vaccinated. Um, so I definitely encourage you all to get uh, the vaccine right now. You can visit websites for DC, Maryland and Virginia about pre-registering for the vaccine. Um, the links are gonna be pinned in the chat. So, I put those at the bottom if you can't see them. Um, it is, wait, I gotta get it open. Um, I know that it's vaccinate.dc.gov for DC. And for Virginia, it is vaccinate.virginia.gov. And for Maryland, it's coronavirus.maryland.gov forward slash pages forward slash vaccine. Um, yeah. So check those sites out, pre register for the vaccine. Um, and yes, get the vaccine. Um, I did it. It's not that bad. I definitely encourage you all to do it. And yeah, it's quite simple. You go there, you fill out a little bit of information about yourself and the way it works in DC, you go on site, uh, you meet with a, a medical professional, you fill out a form and you sit down and you get the, the shot. And then they give you your second, if you're doing a two dose shot, they give you a second appointment. If it's one dose, obviously, um, the Johnson and Johnson is a single dose, then, you know, you just get that one shot, but I definitely encourage you all to get vaccine vaccinated. And last not least, I do want to remind you all that Whitman Walker is still open for free HIV and SCI testing that is available by appointment at our Liz location in Northwest DC, as well as our Max Rabson center location, which is located in Southeast DC. Um, to make an appointment, you can call us at 202-797-4439. Uh, also want to remind you all, right now, social distancing is still the best way to reduce COVID-19 community transmission. That means you must continue to increase that six feet distance, at least six feet distance between you and another person to help the spread of the virus and just make sure you have that physical space. Uh, continue to wear your mask in public, avoid large crowds, Encourage work from home if that's something that you can do. Please, if you're not feeling well, stay home. Um, you know, stay home. Don't go out. Don't hang out. Just stay home. That's the best solution right now. If you're uncertain of what you might be struggling with, if you're not feeling well, just stay home. Also, continue to speak with your loved ones, social media, on Zoom, whatever it is that helps you stay connected to those people. Just make sure that, you know, you kind of reduce the the physical um engagement um with those folks 
Also want to remind people, if you are fully vaccinated, one of the benefits of being fully vaccinated is that you can hang out. The CDC actually recommends that you could be around another fully vaccinated person unmasked. So I definitely encourage you to get vaccinated if you are missing that social interaction. Um, One of the good things about being vaccinated is that helps reduce a lot of the barriers you have to have when engaging with people. So um, also check out the CDC's website, continue to do so to stay up to date on, you know, the the national guidelines, but also check out your D.C., Maryland, Virginia websites to stay up to date on your local and state guidelines. Last night, at least wash your hands. That is still one of the best ways to make sure you're not spreading anything, not just COVID-19, but just keep that in mind, like wash your hands. Also, follow us on Twitter, Instagram, Facebook, at Whitman Walker DC, also at Real Talk underscore, hold on, Real Talk DC underscore. Um, and you can stay up to date on everything Whitman Walker Health. You can also visit our website at Whitman Walker, well, Whitman Walker uh, dot org. Um, I hope you enjoyed the chat today. If you have any questions, feel free to drop them in the chat, but hope you enjoyed this. I don't see any questions. Also, one more time, don't forget to register to get the vaccine. I'm telling you, it's not that bad. And it'll be, you'll be able to see your unvaccinated or no, you'll be able to see your fully vaccinated friends um, and y'all can drop the mask based on CDC recommendations. So um, check out the websites. Please get vaccinated and I'll talk to you all next Tuesday. Uh, Bye-bye.